Hello everyone, I'm Ben, and in this video we're going to go through how to create displacement in Redshift in Houdini. Okay, let's jump into it. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to press tab and then create a grid. I'm going to jump inside that grid by double clicking it, and now I want to UV project on this grid so that it has UV coordinates. Press tab, type UV space project, press shift enter, it'll move the display flag down and connect it up. Now I'd like to see if this UV projection is working how I think. So I'm also going to add a tab UV quick shade and drop that down. Make sure it's connected up either by shift entering when I create it or connecting it up like I just did manually. We can see that it's inverted at the moment, right? It's mirrored. So what I'm going to do is go back to my UV project node and change the rotation from 90 to minus 90. Okay, that is looking more in line with what I would like. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this quick shade, otherwise it'll interfere with the way I'm setting up my material. And then I'm just going to go and save this location as one, so quick mark one. So I'll press control one. Now I can type or um, press one to get back to it at any time. And then I'm going to go create my material. So I'll go to the material context, press tab and type RS material builder. And I'd like to create this RS material builder because it's going to give me some nice displacement options. So RS mountains, since that's what I'm making, jump in there. And here we can see that I've got my standard shader and the material. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and press tab because I want to create a displacement. So RS displacement. And this displacement is going to go into displacement on the shader over here. So I need to have the displacement being driven by a texture in this case. So I'll add a tab RS texture node. And then I'm going to run this out color from the RS texture into the texture map slot of the displacement. Now I just have to set a texture that I'd like. So here's a little something I prepared earlier. And this is a Mount St. Helens 8K TIFF. And so you can see it's 8192 by 8192. And this is conformed down from 10K by 10K. And so I got this image over from the United States Geological Survey. And you can see this is the settings that I was interrogating the map with to search for height maps. And it's a great site, so I'd encourage you to go and, and um, take a look and grab some height data. So this link for the apps.nationalmap.gov will be in the description below. And so here it is. I'm just going to accept. And so this is a 16-bit grayscale image, meaning it's got about 65,000 levels of elevation. So there it is. I've got my material set up, and now I'm just going to save this location as Control-2 and press 1 to go back to my material. And I actually want to apply this material, so I'm going to go back to the object context, select the grid, come up to render, and under material, I'm going to choose under my material context, RS Mountain, accept. And I'm going to create a, a redshift light dome. And with this light dome selected, I'm going to scroll up, and under the light tab, I'm going to go to dome map and load in a Kiara Dawn HDR. And so this is from HDRI Haven, amazing site for, for HDRs. I'd recommend it. And I don't want to see the, the actual HDR in the background when I render. So I'm just going to come down here and turn off enable background. Okay. So moment of truth, nothing's going to be happening. I can already tell. I'm going to go to my Redshift render view. And there's what we're going to end up with. And so at the moment, nothing's happening. We need to select our grid here and under redshift, tessellation displacement, enable tessellation, enable displacement. Once we do that, we're in business. Okay, now it's just a matter of polishing it up and getting it how we like. I want to go ahead and move over a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that my camera one, which redshift is using is locked to the viewport so I can move it around and I'm going to go to the corner here where, where the Mount, Mount St. Helens should actually be. Okay, that's looking good, except it's a little bit too tall. That's more like Swiss Alps. So I'm going to go ahead, press 2 on my keyboard to get back to my second quick mark, select the displacement node, and drop the scale down to maybe 0.4. Now we're into something that's a little bit more reasonable looking. And what I did lastly on this one was just to go over to my material context and set the base material or the diffuse down to black just to pick up some more of um, the lighting from the HDRI. And maybe I'll put on a little bit of bloom, drop the threshold so it creeps in from the horizon first, and maybe amp, amp it up a little bit, put this to 0 
and I'll go and add some bokeh. All right, let's drop that being derived from the camera and take the CSC to 0 0.01, 0 0.1, and it needs to be a little closer at the focal plane. So I'll set the focal distance to 4.75, oh, 4.85. Yeah, I just want to get that lip there. All right, that looks good to me. I hope that helps and I'll see you in another video.